This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description. A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a New Thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the New Thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is New Thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. And you wanted to talk about the Word. I want to talk about, depends on who you say that to when you say the Word. So if you the say word. that to Christians, that's going to be a whole different subject. Okay, so okay. You, you want to talk about the power of the Word. Yes, okay. yes. Specifically, probably like in Proverbs where it talks about the power of the Word life and death or death and life is in the power of the tongue that is just mind blowing especially when it comes to life Woo. and you really see like the connection between your word and the actual excuse me i'm a little bit hoarse the words that you've spoken and the actual revelation or evolution of those words in your present circumstance mm-hmm. amazing Amazing. It is. And in self-help, they call them affirmations. Mm -hmm. You create a word that's going to be indicative of something that you want to have in your life, and you speak those affirmations, and they're positive, and they have this remarkable tendency to draw those positive experiences into your life. Mm -hmm. And oh, by the way, positive is a matter of personal preference. There are some people who would be hoping for something that I would never want to have anything to do with, and vice versa. So positive is a personal experience of whatever it is that's bringing good or joy or uplift or warm fuzzies into our lives. And the other thing is that it's always working. It's mm-hmm. a principle. It is a principle and it's always working. And there are times when affirmations seem like they stop working. You know, I'm doing this affirmation and suddenly it's, I did one for about money and I got money and I did one about a relationship and I got a girlfriend and now I'm doing one about my health and I'm still ill. So it, maybe it doesn't work for everything. And there's a little bit of subtext behind the word or the power of the word, because the power isn't actually in the word. The power is in the belief. And the word is used to describe the belief. And it is very possible for us, and I'm probably doing the entire podcast worth in one sentence here. <laughs> it is very possible <laughs> for us to say that we want something while believing that we don't deserve it or we can't have it. Yeah, well, you know what I'm going to say, right? It's a yeah, lot. that's a lot. Because... And it's game on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that I found, personally found, that's important, you know, is that there's no time limit on this. You can speak a word and it's always working. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can forget that you spoke it and bam, it's right up on you. But yes, yeah, so it could be positive. It could be negative. And you talk about the positive, and I think, and I brought this up, I chose this specifically because of something that I experienced recently. And I figured since I'm not any different than anybody else, somebody has gone through this. So I encountered a situation and I sat for a second, you know, and I said, God, this is my line though. So God is used to this. Like, this is not what we discussed. (laughs) And then I go on from there and I started to think and something just came to mind that I had said a long, and I mean long time ago, and here it is. And I thought, you gotta be kidding. You mean it, <laughs> <laughs> this, you know, it, it took that long, but here's the other thing, just because you spoke it, it's like, it doesn't just automatically happen. Like things have to be put in place and moved around and, you know, other people 
may have something to do with it. And all of those component parts have to be brought together to create this reality. And guess what? Sometimes the reality comes and you're saying, this crap ain't what I wanted. <laughs> right. It's, it's, it's right. not it. Yeah. Yeah, there's wonderful power in the specificity of the word. And I'll give you an example in a second. But there's also a wonderful way to deal with that or something better. So when we're saying an affirmation or speaking our word, I can I speak it for this or something better. And better, again, is subjective. And what that does is it keeps us from suggesting to ourselves that we're setting an intention or opening an invitation for something that we don't want or that could be better. For example, if somebody is up for a job and they, you know, they like the job and pays $75,000 a year and they think it's going to be a wonderful, great job for them, there's the concern, oh, if I pray for this job for $75,000 a year and there's another even better, more appropriate job closer to home with a better boss that pays $110, i am saying no to that. So what we want to do is say, hey, this wonderful job opportunity, this chance that I have to share my gifts and talents and skills and abilities and be rewarded so generously, I am open to this good or something better. Mm -hmm. And that kind of gets us out of the way of putting a limitation that it needs to go the way that we said. And that's the positive part. And that's like critically important. Mm -hmm. I think dissecting your words or looking at them and parsing each thing that you say is important. And I'm thinking about the thing that I was, that happened with me. Sometimes it's not even something that you, I ask the question, you know, and I said, I wonder, no, I didn't say that. I said, what would it be like if such and such, what would it be like? And I wasn't saying I wanted it in a positive way. Actually, I was being rather sarcastic and, <laughs> <laughs> you know, not intentionally, but just, just, you know, the way you speak sometimes. Right. And that's and important to examine that because what I said was, and Michael Beckwith says, anything you ask God, God will always answer. You know, right. Not necessarily on your timeline. Exactly. Right. God, maybe it takes a while to get that answer to you in this case. But I thought about it and you say this thing and it's not what you mean, but you could say it in a sarcastic way, but it still goes out there. It's still word mm -hmm. and God answered. So when I said to God, spirit, this is not what we discussed. It most certainly is <laughs> what you discuss. <laughs> it's just not what you meant. So, you know, paying attention to our words is so important because when it said death and life, what is more important than death and life? You know what I mean? You Well, to us. Careful with that. To us, where, you know, death and life is the very clear demarcation of when we've got stuff going on and what we can fit into our day planner. It's really important for us. It might turn out on a more universal, infinite scale to be not that meaningful. You know, it's the difference between mm. breakfast and lunch. It's like, okay, but mm -hmm. there's brunch. So there's kind of, there's an in-between. Maybe it doesn't matter, except to us. But to us, it does. So let's let it matter. So sometimes when we speak our word or we open ourselves up to some good, it turns out that the good was always there. Or we used to have it and we stopped paying attention to it. and it kind of atrophied. I will tell the personal story. When I was much younger, I was way overweight. So, and I think my waistband was like 44, 46 inches. So if I, at that point were to set the intention to have my waistline be 38 inches, that's great. That's very healthy for somebody who weighs 300 pounds. You know, to get back down into that. If, however, I then get to the point where it's a 38 inch and what I really want to do is be in a 34, I've spoken my word and set my intention for 38. And it's going to be really difficult <laughs> to change my mind and get something different unless I can dispense with all the energy that went into that and get past the struggle. So what we want to do is set the intention for the feeling that we're going to have rather than the specifics of what the spec sheet looks like. Mm -hmm. So I want to yeah. feel good and comfortable and healthy and fit in everything that I wear and look good. Throw that into and look good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's okay for a guy, you know, for a woman, a sister, a girl. Hey, girls, we got a number, you know, based on height and all that stuff, other crap. But, you know, we got a number. 
Mm-hmm. So when you and I'm, it may not be a weight number, it may be a size number, you know. Mm-hmm. But we got it. So it's relative, right? It depends because I'm hearing like if I pick this number or something better, okay, fine. But guess what, spirit? This here, right here, this is the number I want. You work with this, we'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> Right here, we good. <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that, that works. And the important part is not the number. The important part is the feeling. Okay, mm-hmm. I know that that number will give me the feeling that I want to have. And what we're able to do is focus on the feeling and use the number as our shorthand from that. The part that we need to be really careful about, however, is that we don't get caught up in the number and lose sight of the fact that what we really want to do is be comfortable and fabulous. Listen, wrong example, probably, because you give me that number, I'm going to feel comfortable and fabulous. Okay. okay. So I got you, but I'm just saying. Synonymous in your mind. Whatever. Give me that. That's a word that means another word. I understand that. I'm just saying, give me the number. I'm okay with it. But I, I hear what you're saying, because... When I think about that number, I think about, you know, I was there once. That was really great. You know, <laughs> so what the heck happened? <laughs> what happened? OK, I got to turn around, and get to that number or that feeling. We're talking about the word. And just for fun, I went and I looked up how many times the word shows up in the Bible. And in the King James Version, it's 745 times of the and word together. That's a lot. That's a lot of use of the word. And the famous one is the beginning of John, where he says the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God, or slightly different order. You can correct me if you must. (laughs) No, it's not important, you know, but I I do think that we want to make sure there's a, that we understand the interpretation that we're dealing with here. Mm-hmm. Because what you and I are talking about is the spoken word, the power of that's in the tongue. That's why I picked the Proverbs text. Now, John is over here talking about the word being Jesus back in the beginning. And that's where I have to find the right word so that I'm not offensive. But I think there's a distinction that needs to be clarified with that John John's word and the oneness in Proverbs, because John is specifically talking about Jesus, the person, but New Thought sees it something different. So we always want to make sure, I think, we want to make sure which interpretation we're looking at. Now, the New Thought interpretation, wildly more effective in our life, I think. Yeah. And if you think about Jesus not being the guy walking around Jesus, but the Christ light, and that Christ light can shine anywhere, anytime for anybody, then suddenly there's really no need to translate because the word is our ability to set a conscious intention and invite something new into experience. And our word activates the creative law that creates everything. So we are partners with this principle and it is always responding to our intention. And we get to solidify our intention and focus it by using words because words are specific. Feelings and thoughts and ideas are squishy. And words let us actually specify something and describe it and define it and activate the the law and then bring something different into being. The words are secondary. And this is the part that they, you know, address with the word in that part of scripture is that it's not about the words that we say, it's about the words that we believe, because it's a little more complicated. I'm with you 100%, but I got to roll back for a second, because okay. it's something that we both said, we agreed in the, I think the pre-show or, or at some point, we talked about how it's easier when you don't have to unlearn something. It's easier <laughs> when ah, you yes. don't know something. You know? Yep. And I guess what I bring is the part where I know what, people know from the traditional teaching or traditional indoctrination in terms of the interpretation of scripture. I know what they're bringing and you got to undo that and redo it. And I think the redo space, and I'm going to use new thought, but 
the term you thought, the redo space is so wonderfully freeing, but I got to get you there. You know, and sometimes there's a nuance of a definition that will get in the way. So what you're saying is wonderful, it's great, but I got to make sure those there might be, you know, some Christians that are still thinking about the word as a person. Right. And it's not, you know, it's, it's that Christ consciousness thing that's going on back there that we as Christians, that teaching isn't necessarily in the top 10 <laughs> <laughs> things that are taught. <laughs> and it is very difficult to throw away a lot of stuff that we've known or lived or learned and keep other parts because it makes us feel like we're being really arrogant and cherry picking whatever we grew up with, which in fact is, might be what we're doing. Maybe that's what this whole thing is about, but it's also, as you point out, the matter of meeting people where they are and not saying things that are so a true and b offensive, <laughs> they're not going to be able to hear them. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's there. I think I'm really very sensitive to it because I made the transition. So I'm really yep. sensitive to it. But And you have a, that very long history in, in the other tradition. Yes. So that is a, a well-worn groove. Yeah. But, I, you know, even in that, very rarely now do I run into a roadblock because I see both sides of it. And I think that's a wonderful thing. But I always, I never take for granted everybody does. Hmm. Not that I'm so special. That's just my experience. Right. I never take for granted. I use the term Christ consciousness a bit. And when I first started using it, it was, to me, I understood it immediately and blah, blah, blah. And now it's like, when I say that to people without an explanation and the sensitivity of what that means, they're looking at me like, okay, she's getting ready to talk about some weird new age stuff. You know, like, who's this? Who's this arrogant woman who thinks that she's got Christ consciousness? Yeah, that's, and so then you got to go, and I thought, okay, we got to just do this really slowly and gently because I don't want to hurt you. I'm yeah, you don't want to lose the crowd. Let's take a break and come back and talk about more of the power of the word. It's Reverend Bill letting you know that the Practical Prayer for Real Results class is now available on demand. That's right. You can take it at your own pace anytime you want. All of the information is at bethelight.com. That's b-the-light.com. You know where to find that stuff. The class is five lessons broken down into 18 modules, and you can take them at whatever pace is comfortable for you. As you work through the process, it starts out with the theory, goes into the practice. There are experiential activities and exercises. And at the end of the program, you will wind up with an understanding of how practical prayer works and a practical prayer for yourself that will work to create transformation in your life. And as you know, it works for everything. Take a look at the class online at bethelight.com. There's a sample lesson so you can see how the class is going to work for you and then dive in. The great news is it's on sale now. You can register and save $20 off of the regular price. I'm looking forward to seeing you in class. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni, talking about the power of the word. The power of the word and the power of your word and the power of everybody's word and what happens when the word doesn't seem to have power. And it leads to me really quickly into the notion of hiding our light under a bushel, which was also somewhere in scripture there. Because our word is powerful. Our beliefs do activate the infinite creative power that creates everything. And when we hide from it or we shirk it, then it doesn't seem like it's working. Even though, as Ernest Holmes said very cleverly on page 52 of the Science of Mind textbook, mm -hmm. that the law always works even when it works by appearing not to work. Because you believe it doesn't work, then it'll work by seeming like it doesn't work. <laughs> yes. Which seems like a tremendous paradox, but is actually a wonderful way of understanding the partnership that we have with our word. Mm -hmm. If I say something and I don't believe it, I'm not going to get the result of what I said. I'm going to get the result of what I believed. And that always happens. And before the break, we were talking about 
having to be gentle and gingerly with people who are coming from a traditional religion and coming into new thought because we say things that they sound (laughs) woo-woo, to use a technical term. (laughs) They sound a little woo-woo. And the reason for that is that there's a tremendous simplicity to the new thought teaching. And the thing that it requires is that we give up blame. And that's, of course, one of my big things is that we don't get to blame God when we don't get what we want. Because we know that God is a principle, that creative law is the one that we call God, that love, that law that shares itself as everything. Mm -hmm. And that we're activating it. And God's not doing us a favor (laughs) by responding or not responding. God's always responding. And if we are getting an experience that we don't want, then we have to deal with the fact that we brought that on. Mm -hmm. You know? Absolutely. I think in the very beginning of what you said is that it's what we believe. Mm -hmm. And it's always working. And very often, not just in the religious space, but people say things that they don't mean. Mm -hmm. Or they say things in a way that they didn't mean it to be that way. Sometimes we say things (laughs) as a joke, you know, or a cliche or something. Cliches can be horrible. Yeah. And it's working. And you think, well, hey, matter of fact, remember I said that I just experienced something Mm -hmm. and it came back to me that it was a cliche in a sense. Yeah, it was pretty much a cliche. And I thought, well, that's not what the intent was, but that's what the words said. And that's... (laughs) So I guess spirit doesn't deal in cliches and jokes and stuff that, you know, that we don't mean to say. I may express it from my cultural language and somebody else hears something entirely different. Mm -hmm. But in this particular instance, you know, I said something and I thought I wouldn't have ever thought that that would be anything. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's... Yeah. That's the power of the word. And that's why we get mm-hmm. to watch the words that we're using because they will wind up meaning what they actually mean rather than what we claim that they meant. Yes. So, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when you have a friend or if you notice an acquaintance who uses phrases like, that's a pain in the ass or a pain in the neck, pay attention to how often they are getting medical attention for things that relate to their neck or back. Yeah. Or, or backside. Yeah. You know, there's a visit to the chiropractor or to the, <laughs> the proctologist <laughs> or somebody or some ointment <laughs> in their future. <laughs> yeah. Or I'm dying to know. I'm dying oh, yeah. to find this out. Well, this is killing me. I thought, whoa, ho. <laughs> wait a minute. No. That's right. Give yourself that's, a little more time than that. That's right. And that's not silly. I need to say that. That is not silly. That's for real stuff. Oh, yeah. And there are people in my family who lately have been saying that they have a feeling that, and then they'll express a thought. I was like, that wasn't a feeling. That was a thought. And the thought's very important. And the reason that I'm bringing it up is because I'm not going to argue with somebody's feelings. If somebody's feeling sad or upset or angry or hurt, it's like, okay, that's where they are. And if they say, I'm feeling like you're a jerk, it's like, that's not a feeling. (laughs) That's actually a judgment with a thought Mm -hmm. packed into it. And we will discuss that. But I point out that they're expressing thoughts and labeling them feelings because I'm then going to, now that I've changed the subject, we're going to get to talk about the thought and whether the thought was correct or not. I'm talking a second about words and the tendency that we have of using our words. When I was in the radio biz many, many moons ago, a friend of mine did sports play-by-play. And I think he was was calling the games at Rutgers. It was a local radio station we were working at at the time. And he was the most clean-spoken person I've ever met. He never used foul language. And so I asked him, I said, why not? He says, because if it's okay for me to use those sorts of words, then it's going to come blurting out on the air, you know, when somebody scores a miraculous basket. Mm -hmm. So just not going to do it. And that instruction stayed with me a long time. And he actually had a very successful career, you know, within the NBA and continued to be very clean spoken. But the way that you speak is the way that you speak. So we can't afford to go slumming in our language (laughs) and expect that it's not going to, it's not going to have an effect. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's going to have an effect. You're right. 
And those kind of, once you come into that knowledge or that realization, taking your time slowly, it's worth it. Because when it hit me, the first thing I thought of was, oh my God, I can see why certain people take a vow of silence. (laughs) 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 I think I'm going to take a vow of silence for, wait a minute, you know, I always do something like on the first 21 days of the year. And I said, I'm taking a vow of silence for 21 days. I thought, no, I got to do the podcast because I (laughs) can't do that. So that's not realistic, but. You know, I wonder if you can assign a vow of silence to somebody else. <laughs> would be nice. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> it just seems like it would be nice. It's probably a little more controlling than I want to be, but maybe. <laughs> I got to since I can't do it at school. Of course, I know what would happen being a good metaphysician. If I insisted that somebody take a vow of silence, the first thing that they would have to tell me that they wouldn't be able to is somebody stealing my car or there's a fire. <laughs> or something else that I, in hindsight, really would have preferred them to share with me. Yeah, right. Leave that one alone. <laughs> yep. <laughs> leave it alone. So I am okay being open to the guidance and the information coming in in whatever way that it does. Yeah. Yeah. So we got it. The power of the word. There's power in our language. And I like the way you always point out positive. You know, it should be positive, powerful, and personal and all those other P's, but positive, that's the biggie. If it's not positive, hold it. Think about yep. it for a second. Probably not worth saying. How's it going to feel coming back? Yeah. The infinite creative power that creates everything. Don't know, no. Don't know, When I no. say, I want to have no loneliness, I want to have no sickness, I want to have no poverty, what it's hearing is sickness, Ill, you know, poverty, you know, loneliness. So they don't know, no. And that's why we need to be positive. We need to be able to set the intention and speak the word for what it is that we're looking for, what it is that we're desiring, because the response is going to be, yes. What is it we're looking for in this? And what could possibly, you know, I know I'm taking this out too far, but I do everything. I take everything (laughs) too far. (laughs) But what could possibly come out of this that I don't work, that I don't want? To me, it's worth it until you make the transition and your language is different and you do it, you know, very automatically and with ease. But until then, you know, I really do try to examine what I say before it comes out. And sometimes it causes me not to speak as fluently or as eloquently and with ease as I would like, but it's worth it. Mm Mm-hmm. It's absolutely worth it. There are times when being able to specify what it is that we don't want is really important. If you read, for example, the entire Declaration of Independence, Mm -hmm. it's got some really flowery stuff at the very beginning. And then there's a whole list of things that we were pissed off about that we were telling England we didn't want anymore. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, sure, sure. And in a practical prayer, we get to do the same thing. Because it's a five-step process, but there's room for another step in there. Because if we get to that affirmation where we're claiming the good that we're looking for, where I'm claiming, I have my perfect health, I have a wonderful, loving relationship, I have plenty of money to spend and to share and to save, and we don't believe it. And we get a little ping out of the back of our mind that says, eh, it's not true. (laughs) That pain, that illness, that cough is going to continue. Then instead of just glossing over it and hoping that it goes away, We can address that very specifically by talking about what the experience is that has no power, that is a temporary illusion, and we get to move past it. And that's the power of the word to be able to, Emma Curtis Hopkins talked about it as the denials, to be able to look Mm -hmm. at something and say, this is not true, this has no power. And denials and reaffirmations are also in spiritual mind treatment. And being able to turn away from whatever that indicator is that's presenting itself and describe exactly why that's has no need to be the case. We don't wish it away or pretend it away. We just basically kick the legs out from under it because there's no truth to it. Mm-hmm. If we're looking at health and sickness, and health is our natural state of being, and sickness is a temporary aberration. So we can look at the sickness, we can describe it, we can have the diagnosis, we can have the prescription in hand, and at the same time know that perfect health is unfolding for us right now. And maybe it's going to be taking the pill, and maybe it's going to be going to the doctor, and maybe it's just going to be allowing ourselves to come back into that space of, of health and harmony and equilibrium. It works. 
it works. So it's, there's no voodoo in using the negative words, but we want to end with the affirmation. We want to end on the positive note. We want to open ourselves up to that new belief and that new experience. And that's what activates the law. And, you know, I have no idea why I picked this subject and thought we could talk about it in one episode. It's going to have to come up again. Of course. Because the word that you just said is believe, what mm-hmm. you can believe. And sometimes, you know, and I'm looking at this a lot, not just for myself, but others as well. You say things and you can say them and say them, but if you don't believe it. So people are saying, you know, I am a millionaire. I am whatever, however the affirmation goes, I'm a millionaire. And you, but you don't really believe that. So I'm thinking, okay, fine. Bring it down a notch or two. Okay. So you can believe. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it down a buck or two. Can you believe in 150,000? Can you, is that an easier? Well, yeah, I can do that. Well, let's start there. I'm going to start there. But the reality is some people can't believe more than 60,000. That's cool too. You know, no shame, no shade. We'll work our way up. But I think that word you use is so pivotal. It's so important. Believe, you know, it's what you can believe. Yeah. Let's take another break and then do a prayer on as good as we can imagine and even better. I love that one. Yeah. Get inspiration in an instant. God calls are the gentle and uplifting moment of truth to help you remember that the bright light of God's love is shining right now as you. It's your God call with Reverend Bill. Start your two-week free trial today and you'll get a phone call four times a week from Reverend Bill with an uplifting half-minute message filled with insight, wisdom, story, and fun. Let your light shine. You can answer the call to listen to it live or let it go to voicemail so you can hear it later. After the free trial, your subscription is just $5.95 a month. The details are at godcall.org. God calls are disruptive, intentionally. Whenever you write something, put on a gold star. They take you away from your routine to remind you about the truth of who you really are. They come at random times between 8.15 a.m. and 6 p.m., so you won't be expecting them. And somehow, the message is exactly what you need to hear at the time. Magic is loose in the world. It's a moment of motivation in the middle of your day. Find out more and start your two-week free trial now. Welcome back to the Practical Pair Podcast. I'm Carol. With Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We have been talking about the power of the word or the power of words. And we have agreed that they are very, very powerful and that the word and words means different things to different people. And also that it's more about our belief than the specific words that we're using. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So it gets complicated. It's actually very simple, but it can be very complicated to try and understand all in one sitting. So we're going to make a commitment to talk about this in the future again. Of course, we will continue talking about it. It's kind of the same thing we talk about every week, but from different perspectives. And yes, we will revisit this. (laughs) I love how you say we're talking about the same thing from a different perspective. And I'm thinking when you say that, yeah, okay. Yeah. But this is like a lot of stuff and they're not all the same to me. This is it. And so, yeah, I'm looking forward to talking about this. But when I get to where you are, maybe I'll see everything as just one thing, you know, from a different perspective right now, from the learning perspective, it's a long list. (laughs) It does seem like there are a bunch of entryways into this and you can go and look around over here and then go look around over there. And eventually we do notice that they converge and where they converge is on our belief system. So, and our interaction with that creative principle, the power that creates everything. You know, I'll be digging into that this afternoon. Mm -hmm. They converge, you know, you just said that. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to diagram this thing out. That's where I start. Oh, well, good luck with that. Uh, listen, so, I think I'm going to get it by next week. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Don't give yourself a time limit. Uh, it's all unfolding, it's all unfolding in perfection. Well, you can use the prayer that we're going to do today. Okay. And you can apply this. The prayer that we're going to do is for our experience to be as good as we can possibly imagine and even better. 
And sometimes I claim 10% better because usually people have some leeway, eh, 10%, a little more, a little less, that'd be fine. You know, if it's a hundred thousand dollar a year job, it's 110,000. I can, that's yeah, in the same ballpark and it'll be okay. As good as we can imagine and even better. So we're not going to put any limitation on the experience that we're having by saying it has to be like this and I'm not going to accept anything better. And we don't need to be specific about exactly what it looks like. We can understand the tone and the texture and the feeling of the experience that we're having once we've got this new experience in our life and then invite that to come into our lives in whatever way it's going to and have that be as good as we can imagine and even better. And the principle works for every area of our life. It works for our health and our physical experience. So if there's a, an illness or a discomfort or <laughs> grumpy <laughs> portion of our body, the prayer can apply to that being comfortable and healthy and vibrant and vigorous and whatever the opposite of grumpy is. And mm -hmm. not just to the point where it doesn't bother us or interrupt us, but that we don't even notice that it's there as good as we can imagine and even better. Same thing for our finances and our prosperity. It works in our income and it works in our relationships. So a wonderful, deep, committed, loving relationship, if that's what we're looking for, or a fabulously supportive group of friends or a workplace where I'm able to do my work and share my gifts and connect with my colleagues and be really appreciated and get generously compensated. Whatever it is that we're looking for, the prayer is as good as we can imagine and even better. And we start by turning our attention away from the situation and the circumstance in the world around us. We bring that notion of what it is that we're inviting. We take it within and we open our awareness to that infinite creative power, that divine presence, that one that shares itself as and through and in all of its creation. It's God or it's nature or the universe or spirit or the Big Bang or a happy coincidence, however we describe it. It is that one which has been sharing itself since the very beginning of time that continues to unfold and reveal itself through its creation in so many, many, many different ways. And to know without any question whatsoever that because that's all there is, there's that divine presence revealed in an infinite variety of ways that each of us is an expression of the one. Each of us is a unique way that that divine presence is revealed here in experience. So we can each with complete integrity, honesty, and clarity state, I am that divine light of God's love shining right here and right now. And knowing that's the case, we can claim all of the good that we are open to. Whatever that feeling of satisfaction, of contentment, of uplift, of joy, of harmony, of completion, of wellness and oneness and wholeness, that we feel as we have this next experience. We open ourselves to that. We invite in that experience and we claim to be supported in the experience with the full power and presence of that infinite creative law. That creative law is always saying yes. And as we open ourselves up, as we speak our word of intention into that law, it is saying yes. In whatever way we are asking, the law is saying yes and it's unfolding as good as we can imagine and even better. We are putting no limitation whatsoever on that law. We are opening up full blast and the law is already responding. The good is already coming into experience for us and through us and as us and with us. And it shows up in ways that are completely predictable and easy to understand. And it shows up in ways that we never would have guessed. That only in hindsight can we say, oh, now I understand how that could work. And the good continues to unfold as good as we can possibly imagine and even better. I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for the good. I'm grateful for the stories of success that we get to tell. I'm grateful for the wonderful way that the law is already responding. And I am grateful to be able to speak this word on behalf of each one listening and release it into that creative law that has created everything. And to know without any question, doubt, hesitation, that it is now creating this. The good is happening now. And so it is. Practical Prayer Podcast with Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of BeTheLight.com. Be-the-Light.com.
www.realrealmedia.com where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Reverend Bill's classes in practical spirituality at newthoughtphilly.org. This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description.